In this video, I want to show you some of the nifty features that you can use in your office and space plans and that help you to use walls and windows and doors in a much more automated fashion. They save you a lot of, a lot of time. They're kind of fun to work with. So I've started a office layout here using the office layout template that you find under maps and floor plans, the office layout template. And what I'm doing is just roughing out a outline of my office using the pencil tool. So I'll just finish this and it, it's helpful to note that if you draw these in a counterclockwise manner things work out better. So I've finished the rough outline of of my office and you, we've got the shape selected. You can see down on this data bar it's 18 by 12 feet so this is a reasonable size for an office, maybe kind of big. And what I'm going to do is go to this solution specific ribbon tab here called plan that's available for space plans and office layout templates. And when we click on that you'll see there's a convert to walls button up here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say I want exterior walls and I want to add dimension lines and we'll delete the original geometry. So when I click OK, Visio creates walls and adds dimension lines and gets rid of the original sketch that I had. So what do we have here? We've got wall shapes and dimension lines. If I click on one of the dimension lines, you can see that it only has two handles. It's a 1D shape. I can actually pull it away and move it around like this, move the, the handles wherever I want. You'll see that the actual length of the shape is depicted as I resize it in the text of the shape. Let's undo and go back. and You'll see that the handles are red, so they're actually glued to the wall. If I pull the wall down here, you can see that it too is a 1D shape and that the dimension is indeed glued to it. Let's undo and put that back into place. And you'll notice also that the walls have the special special feature that if you select them they temporarily show a dimension as well. If you pull the wall away, notice that the the outline around the wall is there, but as soon as I make a connection again, Visio heals this joint up so that the, the lines are proper. You don't have any black lines. Now there's a faint white line there maybe, but that's just an artifact of rendering on the screen. That'll print just fine on your printer. Similarly, if you drop another wall onto the drawing, this is actually kind of fun. You start nudging it with the arrow keys, you can see it actually jumps and heals with the the joint automatically. If I pull this away, you can see uh, <laughs> I'm too close. If I pull this away, you can see that the black line again is around the wall, and here this joint is is uh, gone. And again, as I move over, at some point I get close enough, and Visio says, "No, let's heal this." So we'll draw the black lines this way and this way, so we have a nice wall joint that's going to print and render just uh, attractively. You'll notice when I select a wall that I have various shaped data fields. I can actually change the wall thickness either by drop down six inches or type in something ridiculous like 12 inches. It's a very, very thick wall. Maybe it's an old building. This is a supporting wall. And some of the, some of the Sheet data fields are just for data purposes. Maybe you'd want to generate reports off, off of your plan, but some of them actually affect the, the the graphics on the page. So wall length and wall thickness, obviously, are going to change the look of the shape, whereas wall height is sort of the third dimension. So this is just for your own bookkeeping. You'll notice that there aren't a lot of different door shapes and window shapes and that's because well let's just I'll just show you there's a double door there's an opening and there's a window and a single door and that's because these shapes are highly configurable but before we talk about how you configure them watch what happens when I take a window shape and drop it on a page so okay that looks like an architectural window symbol but as I move it towards the wall Visio says, ah, the window is in the vicinity of a wall. Why don't I 
rotate the window so that it matches the orientation of the wall and glue it to the wall. You can see the red handles here. If I take the wall and move it over here, notice that the window moves along with it. If I make the thickness of the wall greater, let's make it oh, well 10 inches, the thickness of the window changes as well. So Visio has done a lot of work for you to integrate this window with the wall so you don't have to do all this stuff yourself and use alignment operations and centering and snapping and things like that. We can freely resize the window like this manually or we can change the width of it by typing in a value or selecting from a drop down list. So let's just make it 48 inches which is 4 feet. That's just fine and we're good to go. Let's see. Similarly let's just finish this here I'm going to move this up just a little bit. So we have this really thick wall. Maybe this is just a little storage room. What happens if we put a door on this? You can see it snapped right to the, the right to the wall immediately. And again, we have similar properties like we have with the with the window. I can make it a wider door if I want. And you can see there's a problem here that the door is going to collide with the the, the inside inside wall. So if you right click on the door you'll see there's a reverse left right opening so I can change the way it opens and I can change the in outness of it as well so that it's out here. So this would be a reasonable way to open a door to get into this little crawl space here like that. So a lot of nice automatic features that make it much easier to work with space plans and windows and doors and walls. So I'm going to delete some of this stuff in the middle. There's one last bit I want to show you and that's the space shape. I'm going to just drop this space shape here. And you can see that if I zoom in just a little bit, oops, just a little bit, it says office 100 square feet. So this implies that this shape knows something about its, its area and you can see as I make it smaller the area is actually updating. The neat thing about it though is if I right click and then choose auto size, then Visio sizes this shape to match the outline of my office. You can see there's no extra green hashing sticking over anywhere. It tells me the actual area of this space. Now when I select this shape, you can see there's quite a few, few um, shape data fields that cross over not only the physical size of the shape but the the name of it, the space ID, the department, the phone number, etc, etc, etc. So this gets interesting. You start moving into the direction of facilities management once you start adding space shapes to your drawing because not only do they give you the area but they allow you to categorize it by department. So you could start breaking down a, an office space by department and how much space they're using or renting and what that costs. All sorts of interesting features. One last little tip. We have the dimension lines that you get when you convert an outline into a, a, a plan. Uh, you convert an outline into walls. And you can see they're a little bit distracting. Maybe they're necessary when you go to print because it is nice to know how big everything is, but you don't have the, the dimensions of the walls unless you actually selected the shapes. So you might want to turn the dimension lines off while you're working, and one quick way to do that is with layers, because all these shapes are assigned to layers. So let's go to the Home tab, way over here to the Editing group, and we'll click on Layer Properties. It was off the screen just a little bit. And you'll see that we've got door layers, space layers, wall layers, window layers. All these space plan and office layout related shapes are assigned to, to layers in advance. And that makes it easier for you to, to lock things down, to hide things, etc., etc. So, like I was saying earlier, the dimension lines are a bit distracting when you're working. And they might not be that important when you're just placing walls and windows. So let's just turn them off. And we can do that with the, the visible the visible checkbox right here for dimensions and you can see if I hit apply they go away. The shapes are still there, they're just hidden right now. Similarly if you are going to say put furniture into this into the space you might want to turn off the space. 
layer as well. So those are all hidden. So th that wraps it up for tips and tricks for using walls and windows and doors and space shapes and dimension lines when you're doing your office and space plan layouts.